Hey everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak here, Digging Deeper Jazz Series, and this video is called Slow Your Roll. So, this is going to be a great improvisation exercise. As always, it's for all instruments, any instrument whatsoever. And uh, today we're talking about slowing down our fingers, but speeding up our brain. And I guarantee you're going to improvise better because of this. Um, today we're going to be using as our example song a Coltrane butt kicker of a tune called Moments and Notes. And here's the thing, today we're only going to be soloing with half notes and whole notes with this practice concept. So uh, no excuses about your, your slow fingers. You don't need them. You just need a, you need a quick brain. All right, as always, I want to thank Gonzalez Reeds, who are the sponsor of these videos. I've been playing Gonzalez Reeds for years and years, and I wouldn't be talking about them here if, first of all, I didn't use them personally, and if I didn't love them. So, Gonzalez Reeds, check those out. All right, so this idea of half note and whole note soloing, it's not new, it's not a Jeff Antoniak innovation, but it occurred to me today as I was working on this song, Moments Notice, for Maryland Summer Jazz. Uh, I founded Maryland Summer Jazz about 14 years ago. I'm the artistic director, and it's a workshop built just for adult students. It's, there's only a handful of these in, in the United States and in the world, frankly. And so uh, it happens every July in uh, Washington, D.C., the area that I'm in. And um, so I was looking, looking over this tune and this occurred to me. And by the way, the folks that attend Maryland Summer Jazz are just like you. The folks out there, whoever you are listening to this, I'm talking about you. So you could be adult amateurs, a lot of you folks watching these videos, and frankly, you are who I'm talking to here. Um, people who are want to learn this music and are so eager and into it. You could be watching Netflix now, you could be watching cat videos. You're watching me talk about jazz you're obviously pretty fanatical, right? Um, so you folks having a community and a place to play, that's why I started Maryland Summer Jazz 14 years ago and why I'm still talking to this day about creating a spot, a community for you guys. Um, there are also actually a lot of jazz professionals and teachers who watch these videos. I'm very, very thankful for you folks and you too are folks involved in Maryland Summer Jazz. I hire a faculty of Grammy winners and below. Let's put it like that. Um, all sorts of great jazz pros from around the country, university professors, touring artists. So those are the folks involved with Maryland Summer Jazz and I have a blast with it every year. And so today I was looking at this tune, uh, Moments Notice. And wow, it's a hard tune. I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, it has fast moving harmony, it's chromatic, it's not very hard to find a wrong note constantly on this tune. Then it's fast, so not only is the harmonic rhythm fast, not only is the harmonic rhythm tricky, meaning you know moving chromatically and moving around like that, different keys, but the tempo is fast. Uh, as if those two things weren't bad enough, Coltrane uh, played the hell out of this tune. So we have this definitive classic recording of this song to contend with when we play it. So uh, for all these reasons, um, I thought it would be a good one to talk about today. And so let's talk about this idea of half note and whole note soloing. So especially on a song that has a lot of two, two chord per measure harmonic rhythm, soloing with whole notes means you dang well better pick a note on beat one that is going to be consonant or at least somehow melodically work over the second chord, right? You play a note on beat one and hopefully you're with the chord change. Well, the chord is changing on beat three, but you still have to hold that note. So whole note soloing is frankly extremely hard. Sometimes it's impossible depending on the tune. It's possible on this tune. Uh, it's very, very challenging. Clearly it's not finger challenging, but it's really brain challenging. And that's the idea. We use this exercise to really help us learn the song. And then we get our fingers involved once our brain really knows what's going on. Lots of times our fingers are doing the walk and our brain is kind of thinking about what we're gonna have for dinner or you know our wife's anniversary or whatever, uh, when we should be thinking about the tune. Think about your anniversary still, you know, but uh, be, be thinking about the tune when you're playing it as well. All good advice. So let's do this. I'm going to play uh, as best I can, a whole note solo through, uh, you know, the first go through on uh, moments notice. And uh, let's see what I can find here.
So there were definitely times when I didn't like the melody that I was playing. So I wasn't judging myself on a great solo. I wasn't judging myself exactly on the, on the melody I was playing but more like the correctness of how those notes fit on some of those chords. There were some I like better than others, but I'm pretty sure that uh, theoretically most of my notes made sense, uh, brain-wise. And then of course there's ear-wise. It's possible to play something that should sound good and doesn't. It's also extremely possible to play something that theoretically doesn't work and it sounds great because of your melodic shape, right? So that right there, there is no way I could do that if I didn't know this tune or if I wasn't firing on all cylinders. You really have to know the song and you have to know how the chords relate to each other, especially the two chord per measure ones. This is a challenging song to do it on. Now the next thing is let me try doing this with half notes. Now um, it's good news, bad news. The bad news is okay, I have to play twice as fast. I really have to be thinking about what's coming up, but frankly, this will actually be a little easier because I can now use voice leading. I can use some, some different ideas. I, I am able to play more of a melodic shape, let's say. So let me uh, give this a try playing with uh, half notes now. So you, you, you say I'm cheating, fair enough. I was essentially playing the melody of this tune. Here's the thing, I've been playing this song for 25 years, give or take. Today, today, it occurred to me that Coltrane's melody is really a half note solo that he changed the rhythms around on. I've played this melody and practiced these changes for probably 100 or 200 hours, a long, long time. It hadn't really occurred to me. I knew his melodies fit beautifully through the changes, but I discovered that today. Some of you are out there thinking like, yeah, Jeff, duh. Um, okay, you bring up a good point. Um, here's the better point I'm gonna bring up for you. I think it's fantastic when we discover quote unquote simple, obvious stuff for ourselves. Think of every important lesson you learned in your life. You had to burn yourself on that stove, right? You had to date that girl that everybody told you not to date. Whatever it was, it should have been obvious, but you had to learn for yourself. But that knowledge is the knowledge that I think sticks with us, right? So I love this exercise because it's gonna really teach us things that we've been told or read a million times, such as seventh to third resolutions, or voice leading, or creating a good melodic shape, or common notes between chords. You've probably heard all this stuff before, maybe you've practiced it a bit. Well, you can't do this until those things are in place. Okay, so uh, let me do my own version of the half notes now that I, you heard me you know, paraphrasing, practically playing the melody of this song, which is a whole note melody, which Coltrane just spiced up with some one or two passing notes, but more like you know, some, some different rhythms. All right, here we go, half notes. This is such good exercise. There was one or two times I sort of flinched or it's like, oh crap, I played myself into a, into a little spot. And unsurprisingly, those are the places in the changes where I'm just a little less confident. The places I really know the changes, I was, my, my brain was relaxed, my fingers were okay, and I actually was able to think about what is a good melody? Where should this go from here? Do I hear it going up? Do I hear it going down? 
Do I hear a half step resolution or do I hear myself jumping a sixth, a nice, you know, dramatic, melodic interval that Coltrane himself uses in the tune? So when you can get your brain relaxed about this stuff, surprisingly, your fingers are going to be there. They're going to move just fine when it comes time to play eighth notes. The melodies you're going to play. That's one of the things that Coltrane was great at. He wrote all these ridiculously uh, hard songs, especially in this era of his, uh, you know, this period of his playing and composing and giant steps and satellite and countdown and all these songs. Yet he was able to find these wonderful melodies through those tunes too. So this half note and whole note soloing, do it on the blues, do it on a simple song like Blue Bossa or Summertime, all these jazz standards, I would really have you do that. It's, it's one of the best things you can do and it's about your brain, not about your fingers. So I hope you give this a try. Thank you so much for tuning in. I should have said it earlier, but I'll say it now. Please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And please, please share this with other musicians and jazz fanatics you know. I just want this information to get out there. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back with more next time. Thank you so much. And uh, by the way, feel free to uh, write me at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. If you'd like a copy of this lead sheet, it's just the straight ahead uh, Coltrane tune, but I'd be happy to send it to you if you like. All right, thanks so much, take care.